Hey folks, this is Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist. In this case, I'm going to be changing the wick in the Aladdin Blue Flame Paraffin or Kerosene Heater Model 37. I haven't found um, a video online on how to do it, so this is going to be hopefully useful for those trying pretty much the same thing. The, um, the different models of, of uh, Aladdin heaters have different wicks and changing them it's have, have a few a few slight differences so keep that in mind we start by opening up the heater right with care and removing the flame spreader and can't remember the name of this other thing here you just have to twist it a little bit it has like a little thingy and knot there that gets in place and once that's done you get your your new wick this is an Aladdin wick for model 16, 25, 32 and 30 Seven. 37 is the one we're using now probably you will have uh, here's where there's a, a few differences in different models um, here you have the, the cog wheel with those little teeth which is used to pull up and down the wick move the wick up and down now um, the problem generally is that, that with these old heaters the, um, the, the wheel may be stuck so you have to be careful and, and you know don't apply this is like like a general philosophy for mechanical <laughs> and machines but not only that but also for uh, for for life in general don't don't use force unless you really have to so be careful about that so what we're going to be doing is holding it on the side this is the wick carrier holding it we're going to be using the cogwheel softly carefully so as to not force it now I already managed to remove this before which took a, a quite a bit more time <laughs> it would have been a very boring hour long video because it, it was it was pretty dirty it wasn't moving freely but just have patience maybe use a little bit of WD-40 if it's really stuck and that's how you remove the wick uh, carrier it had the wick on the inside which it's removed the same way in which I'm gonna be putting the new one in so the wick you have the wick some have um, clips some have uh, a button on the side so you spread it like that and you place it inside the wick carrier you have to press it just a little bit so that you see those those tabs there maybe changing modes there for a second no. these two clips should go right in there so applying a little bit of pressure on the sides it will go in like that and we push it into place first time trying these so a little bit of patience guys oh, there I, I see the clip at least one of them and I have to turn it a little bit There it is, they're already clipped into place, you see? And you have to do the same on this other side so that both of them are aligned. There it is. So those two clips are in place and they have, this is going to be the, the amount of wick 
that I'm going to be able to burn. Now I have to align these two, okay, and make sure they don't get caught into anything as I place the wick in there. It has to be going straight into the tank like that with the cog catching on this ladder that I have here on the side. For that, a screwdriver may come in handy. Also, a, a knife. I haven't had one here as well. All right. There you see how it goes. All right. So carefully putting it into place like that in this the, the central chimney that it has you just have to make sure it doesn't get caught on the sides as it goes down Okay, so as to not bore you guys horribly, I'll just cut this video a little bit shorter. But what I'm doing here is basically that, make sure that the wick goes down on the sides. Always being careful about the cog wheel, so as to not catch it or break it. And then catching it here on the side. Okay, so after a few minutes, of carefully placing the wick here it, it takes a little bit of time I use the knife because it's very very narrow not even a, a screwdriver fits in there so you have to be very patient about pushing it down on the sides and also being careful so that it doesn't bunch up here on the inside either because if not you start having that if you start forcing it down um, yeah so it takes a few minutes but eventually you get to this point where you place all the wick on the inside it's in the carrier and you don't have it bunched up here on the inside either. Uh, once you have that, what you have to do is make sure that the, the cog wheel there with, with the teeth catches the, 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 the wick carrier, the metal wick carrier here on the side and carefully, not to force it, move it down, push it down to the bottom because what you want is to make sure that the wick is as close to the bottom as possible of the tank because after you fill it up you will have to leave it for about an hour so that it soaks completely with paraffin or kerosene all right oh, remember <laughs> don't use gasoline just paraffin kerosene you could use diesel or heating oil but because of the dye and because it's not as refined, it's going to be making your wick a little bit more dirty sooner. It's going to be needing replacing uh, sooner. And uh, there's, a, you know, there's a chance of having a little bit maybe more of, of a smell. But apparently it doesn't seem to be that much of a problem. The problem is that because of the, of the red dye that uh, heating, fuel, heating oil and, and diesel has, the wick is going to be getting much dirty sooner and need replacing. But that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, so I'll fill it up now with with uh, with kerosene and and try it out. Before doing that, we'll replace just in case, so that you see how it ends up looking. The um, basket here that I don't remember the name, just a quarter of a turn, and then putting back the flame spreader there on the top. All right. Okay, that's that's it. Now all we have to do is fill it up with kerosene and let it soak up 
for for about a, an hour or so. Okay, for the first actual test, I'm going to be using good uh, kerosene, clear kerosene. Uh, I just placed a little drop of um, what is this called, like um, a silicone gel for for rubber, so as to have that O-ring. It was drying up a little bit, so that, that really helps. A little bit of, of silicone grease helps quite a bit. One more thing, guys. These little pumps uh, actually work as a siphons. If you uh, put one container above the other, it will siphon. But they're very handy for uh, moving small amounts of fuel from one container to the other. You just have the, the pump here. Just place one there. I don't know if you get to see that. Okay. There it goes over there the other one over here and just uh, a few pumps will send the fuel to where you want it's you know in it's it's not maybe as fast as, as some other methods and such but it is clean and tidy if you don't want to waste any fuel and also if you don't want to have any you know it just a, a, a couple drops of this stuff will leave you with, with quite a bit of, of, of smell so it's gonna be helping in that as well I can already see that the the fuel uh, gauge actually moving over there. We're going to be checking then if uh, if it's working properly once I fill it up. So after about an hour of letting the wick soak nicely properly, we're going to be trying it out, letting it up. First of all, I'm going to be moving this here to the side. we do that raising the wick a little bit better angle over here there we go And they're starting to burn as the blue flame is supposed to. Brand new wick, guys, so it's gonna be needing a little bit of use, then a little bit of. Yeah, that's that's no good, you see? It, it should be blue. That's gonna be maybe helping it spread a little bit until it completes the circle. There's really, with kerosene heaters, there's really no in-between point. It has to be at an, exact, um, at an exact level, the wick, because if not, you start burning fuel improperly, and there's going to be waste of fuel, there's going to be more smell. Uh, this is too high for a paraffin uh, and an Aladdin blue flame heater. It has to be, the flame has to be blue all over, like that. Yeah, it's getting a little bit less it's not that even but again brand new wick so it's gonna be taking a little bit more of time so as to get um, a proper adjustment then using the wick cleaner which is another little gadget that uh, comes actually have it around here using this this is the wick cleaner after a little bit of use you press it and turn it like that and it spreads the, the wick evenly and a little bit nicer so that's it guys that's uh, <laughs> in the end how how it ends up looking uh, I did have a little bit of a of a problem actually here there was a little there's a little leak 
so the tank is only half full I, I found a little leak there yeah, there it is actually there so I'll have to um, empty the tank again put a little bit of epoxy glue so as to patch that up you know especially with these old heaters make sure that there's not a great amount of rust because that rust may be behind it hiding a leak this one didn't have that much rust but still there's a little pinhole there just a little you know like a needle hole in there they'll have to patch up but the worse the rust is the more likely it is that you will have a problem of that nature it's it's already actually starting to heat up nicely and um, kind of corrected itself a little bit in there for nice even nice even flame yeah it's uh, it's really not that much of adjustment that you can do it has to remain blue there it is already heating up nicely I can see that it's uh, it's pretty good for that purpose of course as intended fuel gauge is working so that's it guys I hope you enjoyed this little video and if you have one of these um, old heaters maybe one day try it out guys take care have a great day see you in our next video bye bye